without any further delay, I'm going to call up Yehuda to take it away. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the first part of the business class competition. Um, so in this, in this, there's going to be a couple of different parts, um, but for this particular class, we're going to focus really mainly on two, two categories. Uh, we're not going to really focus too much on the actual specifics of the writing of the plan. Um, that will leave for the later classes. Um, but for this particular case, we're going to focus um, on two separate categories. The first category will be uh, the research and the things you need to figure out before you actually start writing the business plan um, and before you actually, actually start the business. Um, and then the, sec the second category will be the actual business plan outline. Uh, now truthfully, there are, you know, the, a business plan is, is, is not universal. There are many different types of styles of a business plan, but for our intents and purposes, uh, for the competition, just to make it easier for the judges and for us to be able to see and easily understand how your business will run, uh, we're looking for one particular format. As we'll explain later, it'll be, you know, basically we're looking for nine different components with an appendix at the end and financials included. So I'm going to briefly go over all of the nine different components, um, just basically outlining what you should, what information you should be putting in there. Again, not delving into too much detail, that will be for the later classes, but just to show you how to format the plan correctly. So just to summarize again, it's just the research you should be doing before you actually start the business. And then the second part will be the actual business plan outline. So let's quickly go over the agenda. Um, so we'll, we'll look at uh, the PowerPoint here. So we're going to basically cover six different categories. First of all, we're going to discuss what is a business plan. You know, the saying goes that every successful business starts with a great business plan. So we're just going to discuss what exactly a business plan is. Now, why write a business plan? Now, why is it important? Who's going to read the business plan? That's going to be the second part. The third part is the operational and financial checklist for the feasibility of the business. You know, before you start the uh, actual writing of the plan or before you actually start a business, you should, be, you should basically do research to see if you have the wherewithal both on the operational side, basically to see if there's a demand for the product, can you make the product, and even if you can do that, you have the financial capability to be able to run the business effectively. So we're going to go through you know, things that you need to research, both on the operation and the financial side, before you actually start writing the plan. Um, the, the fourth section we're going to discuss is basically the key elements, which is basically the format of the plan. As I mentioned before, uh, there are many different uh, business plan styles. But uh, for our intents and purposes, we're looking for one particular format, which we'll say was nine sections written a certain way just so we could be able to judge it easier. So we're going to go through basically just basic housekeeping and showing how we want you to format the plan. And then we, when we, we get through with that, we're going to do the actual business plan outline. As we said before, it's the six different compartments, uh, sorry, the, the nine different uh, components of the plan. Um, just we're going to basically outline each, each component and what we're looking for from you in terms of information for the plan. And the last thing we're going to discuss is the tips for writing a good plan. Just uh, basically, you know, an investor or people that are looking, the reviewer of your plan sees many different types of business plans. So we want to just give you some tips on figuring how to make your plan stand out and basically, as they say, pop. And basically, it should make an impression on the investor or the lender or the person reviewing your plan. So that's the agenda. Okay, so we'll move on to the first part of the business plan is what is a business plan? So let's, let, 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 let me first read exactly what we're saying here. Uh, basically, they, it encompasses it very well, and then I'll explain what we mean. A business plan is a document that summarizes the operational and financial objectives of a business and contains the detailed plans, target dates, and budgets showing how the objectives are to be realized. So basically, it's important for you to realize that most business plans are written before a business becomes operational. So it's important for you to be able to convince yourself 
and the review of the plan that you have the capability to make this a profitable and successful business, both operationally and financially. In other words, the, the, the goal is basically to, as they say, the, the, business, the business plan should cross every T and dot every I in terms of the operations of the business. Any question that a reviewer will ask you about the actual business should be described in the plan. You know, uh, the person might ask you, you know, th uh, for example, let's say, you know, you're planning on opening up a retail store. So uh, uh, a reviewer might, may ask you, uh, so where is the store going to be located? What kind of space do you need? How are you going to market yourself? Who's going to be your supplier? Who's going to be your manufacturer? How, how do you plan, what, what, what's the start date for, for the actual business? When you, how do you plan on running it? How do you plan on, on, on doing all the research and seeing that people are going to actually buy this product? Pricing, billing, all this information should be in the, should be ba that, that's basically going to be the goal of the business plan is to encompass all this information uh, at one time, and this basically shows the person reviewing the plan that this is not just an idea in your head, but this is actually a well thought out plan, and it gives the business a much better chance to be successful, and, will, and also will, it will allow you know an investor or a lender to feel more comfortable lending such a business to, when they realize that this is a well thought out and the person basically can answer any question. Uh, that it takes to run a successful business. Okay, that, moving along to why write a business plan. So who's going to be looking at the business plan? So the first person is the business owner, you, know, you yourself. So this is basically exhibit A of why a person should write a business plan because this might be a great idea in your head. You know, that, but, but, the, but once you put pen to paper and actually crunch the numbers, you might come to the realization that it's going to cost you a lot more than you thought. If, you're, if your milestone goal is to make $10,000 a month, and once you put pen to paper, you realize it's going to cost you $20,000 a month to run the business, you might have to reevaluate the, the entire idea. So again, just for you yourself, just to be able to see if this, is an organ, organ, if this, is a, this business concept makes sense, it, it's important for you to write the business plan just for yourself. Uh, and the next, you know, someone else who might look at your plan would be a bank. You know, the banks are not in, in, in the chesed business. They're, they're, they're a for-profit business. They're going to lend money to a company that they feel that will be able to make monthly payments with interest on time. If they're not confident that uh, the business is going to make money, they're not going to lend. So your job with, within the business plan is to convince the banker that you have a well-thought-out plan and you're going to be able to run a successful business and company. And uh, the third person who might look at your plan is an investor. If you're looking for someone to invest in your business, you know, basically the investor is looking for, as they say, an ROI, a return on investment. They want to make sure that the business is profitable and that they're going to get a, and they'll be able to, and they'll be able to make a profit also. If they're not convinced, if it's not a well thought out plan, then they will obviously won't invest in your business. So for these purposes alone, it's very important why a person should write a business plan. Moving along, the, as we said before, before a person actually starts writing the plan, they should make sure that the business will be able to run both operationally and financially. You'll have the feasibility to run the business both on the operations side and the financial side. So bef before you start writing, these are the few questions that you should ask yourself. Is there, is there a demand? Is, is this product that you're selling or service that you're providing something that, that the person needs, or at least wants. Uh, if, if it's a business, if it's a need, it's obviously a better successful model, but it should be at least something that people either want, but again, more importantly, that someone would need this product. Is the business viable? Is it possible that down the road, in a year or two, there'll be a technology that will make your, uh, make your business model obsolete? If that's the case, then it might not be worth to go into this type of business. Is there competition? How many other people out there are doing the same thing that you're doing? If, you know, and so basically, you'll have to figure out if, you know, who the, your competitors are and why they'll buy from you as opposed to your competitors. What is unique about your business idea that people are going to look to buy from you as opposed to your competitors? And this is obviously a very important one. Is there an underserved niche market? Um, you know, we find that, uh, that a product or service that services underserved individuals usually are more successful. Uh, an example of, a, of, of an underserved market would be 
let's say you have a product or service that, let's say, uh, provides jobs for, for handicapped people, or a, or a service that provides affordable housing for, for middle-class families, or it services veterans or other underserved. So, uh, so the uh, product or service that serves that the needs of underserved markets are usually uh, are more successful and have a better chance of being successful. And basically, it'll open the eyes of, of, of a reviewer of a plan, be it a lender or, 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 or a, a bank or someone who's going to lend you money for the business, we're much more likely to invest in a business that serves an underserved market. Okay, so now that we came to the conclusion that you researched all these areas and you see that you have, the you have the operational feasibility, there is a demand for your product, you can make it, you can produce it, you can supply it. Now, do you have the money to run the business? So the first question to, to consider is, do you have sufficient capital to start your business? You know, it could be that once, you know, this is, uh, again, exhibit A of why it's important for you to write a business plan. Because again, it might be a great idea in your head, but once you crunch the numbers, you might see that your startup cost, uh, you know, let's say a number would be $50,000, and all you have to invest, all you have to put in the business is $10,000. There's too much of a shortfall, it might not be worth for you to start your business. But let, let's say you're not that short, but you're a little bit short. Is, is financing available? Is it, is it possible to apply for a business loan? And even if there is available, do you qualify for it? How's your personal credit? How's your business credit? If you have a lot of credit card debt, it might be hard for you to be able to apply and obtain a loan. So again, all this stuff should be researched if, if you have the, uh, the financing available. And even if, if there are people out there that lend, are you the right person to be able to get a business loan? Okay, and even if you came to the conclusion that you have enough capital and that you could borrow, but what's the cost to continue to operate your business on a monthly basis? You know, this is also very important that if you have the type of business that relies, let's say if you have a retail business that relies on foot traffic and you need to be in a popular area, you know, the cost could be exorbitant uh, you know, to, to rent in a popular area every month. So if it comes out that your, your milestone achievement would be to make $10,000 a month, let's say, that's, you know, you do your, your financial projections and that's what you see your, your goal would be, but your operating costs are going to be $20,000 a month, you might have to reevaluate the entire idea. So this is something that you should be thinking about before you actually, again, before you actually start writing the, the, business, the business plan. And again, obviously, before you actually go into such a business, you need to make sure that you have the operational and financial capabilities to be able to run the business. OK. Um, at some point, I mean, are, we, are we doing questions? What's, what, what's the, you know, so we'll, we'll, you know, obviously, you can write in questions, and we'll take time during the presentation to be able to answer a few questions. Okay, so now we'll just do some uh, little bit of uh, housekeeping here, just what we're looking for, you know, in how we want you to actually outline or format the business plan. You know, as we said, you know, there are many uh, different styles of a business plan. There's not one universal way of a person writing a plan, but just for our intents and purposes, uh, we're looking for one particular format just so to make it easier for us to read and to judge and to basically understand clearly you know, what your business concept is. So we'd like you to follow the outline provided by the, you know, follow the link on the CHY website. And basically, as, you know, if you look at it, there are nine elements or sections. We want you to, there'll be nine different components. We want you to answer the questions on each of the nine different components to the best of your ability. With an appendix at the end, which is supporting documentation, which is not included in the, in, in the we'll see there'll be a limit of how many pages we want. The appendix doesn't have to be included in that limit. And plus the financials, we're going to want to see uh, 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 financial statements, which will be discussed more fully in the financials class, uh, which will be on Wednesday, Mr. Uh, Shem. Um, but again, just to give you a simple, you know, uh, of what we're looking for, uh, the financials, again, I saw it's basically it's an Excel worksheet that just basically we want you to show your startup costs. Uh, first year monthly projections and the second year quarterly projections. So, you know, again, very basic and simple. Just again, we'll, you know, we'll, that will be discussed more on Wednesday exactly how to find out those numbers. Um, and obviously, sample plans could be helpful. You know, you could do a search on, you know, there are many business plan templates out there. You can go online, search the internet. Uh, you can email me and I can definitely uh, send you over some templates that I have. Just again, be aware that. There are many different styles of business plans, but just keep in mind that even when you're 
using these outlines, just try to follow the format that we're requesting that, that you do for our competition. Okay, so just some basic housekeeping, just, you know, just again, just to make this easier for us, for the, you know, for the, the judges to be able to have everything in one format. We want it to be no longer than 20 one-sided pages, no less than 1.5 line spacing. It shouldn't be too crunched together. Now, as we said before, the appendix and the financial projections are not included in the 20-page limit. That could be, that's, you can add as much uh, supporting documentation as you want. That's just added to the end of the business plan. Um, and as I said before, you should format the financials according to the Excel cash flow spreadsheet that's going to be provided in the financial projections class. As we said, just an Excel worksheet showing first year startup costs, first year monthly projections, and second year quarterly projections. Uh, okay, so again, just basic housekeeping, just in terms of making this easy for us to read. The font size should be between 10 and 12 points, nothing too big, nothing too small. Uh, no crazy fonts, use the basic Times and Roman, Ariel, nothing, uh, nothing that makes it hard to read, something just be able to read easier. Um, the margin should be no less than three quarters of an inch, the top, bottom, left and right. Um, all pages should say the name, again, just to make it look professional, you should have the business name on the top and the bottom of the page. And we want your plan to be submitted in PDF format, including the, the appendix. Um, and most, uh, you know, in the later Word documents, you really could just save it directly into PDF format. Again, if you have any problems with any of this type of information, you can always email me or call me, um, and we can discuss, and I can definitely help you figure out uh, the best way how to format the plan and be able to do it the proper way. Okay, so... Moving along, so that's basically the part one, as I said before, just basically the things that you should be thinking about before you actually start on the plan. Uh, now we're going to move along to the actual business plan outline of how you should out, uh, outline the business plan for us. As I said before, there's going to be nine separate components. It's going to be a cover sheet and a table of, uh, again, just looking at the, the PowerPoint, we're going to start off with a cover sheet and a table of contents. The cover sheet is your chance to be a little bit creative. You can, you, you can, uh, you can uh, basically, you know, you be creative in, in, in the cover sheet and showing us uh, your talents there. That you know, that that could be you could use your creativity a little bit. Table of contents is is, is very important, you know, because uh, a lot of the people that review the plan don't have the patience to go through the entire. Again, not for us. We're going to obviously go through the entire plan, but in terms of in general. When you're writing a business plan, it's important for you to have a table of contents. So if someone is looking to, if someone let's say is looking for the marketing section, you should have it clearly stated that the marketing section is on page 18. You don't want the, 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 the reviewer of the plan to be jumping back and forth trying to find exactly where the marketing section is. That doesn't, that, 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 you know, that you're off to a bad start from there. Um, so the first part of the, of the plan is the executive summary. Now this is probably the most important part of the business plan. This is basically all nine components in one, in one summary, and probably in a page, a couple of paragraphs. As I said before, the, a lot of times the review of the plan will not have the patience to go through the entire business plan. So he's going to just look through the executive summary. So the executive summary should basically cover every single aspect of the business plan, all nine components in a con short and concise form. And this obviously should be written last because, uh, again, you're going to need all the other information uh, before you actually be able to write the executive summary. Uh, but that's the first section. The second sh should, be the, should, be, should be the business description, which is actually describing the product or service that you're providing. Again, we're going to discuss each of them in a little more detail. But let me, this is, I'm just going to basically summarize right now the nine different components. As, as I said, the business description is the actual product or service that you're, you know, how you're going to make the product, how you're going to distribute it. Um, the third, the, actually the sections three till six are going to be discussed more in detail in the marketing class. But I'm just going to be, uh, briefly translate exactly 
you know, what we're looking for here. We want to do a market analysis and a target market, which basically is research showing that there is a demand for your product, that people actually want your product. And the target market is who exactly, who, who's the one buying your product? Who is your target market? Who is the person that is in need of your service? Um, the next section uh, is going to be the industry analysis and trends. Basically, you're going to have the research showing that this business industry that you're in is in either a steady trend or in an upward trend. And that, you know, this is the type of business that is on its way out. It might not be the best idea. So you're going to have to show some research showing that this industry is something that, uh, you know, that is, in an, as I said, either a steady, is in a steady uh, trend or in an, up, an upward trend. Um, the fifth part of the marketing uh, plan is going to be your competitive analysis, which means listing your competitors and why you feel your product or service is better than your competitors and why they'll buy from you. And the sixth part is a marketing strategy, which basically you're going to describe how you're going to actually reach your customers. So you're going to have to you know, to show them your, your basically your plan of how you're going to attract clients. As I said before, all this will be discussed in detail in the marketing class. Um, the seventh section is the operations, which is the actual running of the business. Yeah, basically, how you're going to run the operations. We're going to discuss again in more in detail as we move along. And the eighth part is the management and organization. Who's going to be on your management team? Um, who's your personnel? Who, you, who, who do you have to hire to make this a successful business? And the last section is the financials, which, as we said, is your startup costs and two years of cash flow projections, which will be discussed in the financials class. And then the last part is the appendix, which is uh, the actual supporting documentation of all this thing, of, all, of, of whatever we have here. So those are the nine different sections, and I'll briefly go through each of the nine different components and just talk in generalities of what information we're looking for in the different parts of the plan. Okay, so excuse me. Okay, so as I said, the, co the cover page. The, the cover page, as I said, this is your chance to be a little bit creative. You know, you should, you know, make, you can make it eye-popping, you know, dress it up so that, you know, to make a good impression on the reviewer of the plan. So again, so just basic information, the name of the company on top, address, company phone number. If you have a logo, you should put the logo on top. The purpose of the document, as you see here, it's the CHYE business plan competition, the date that the plan was completed, name, address, phone numbers of the owners, name of preparer. Again, this is just the cover page to show, you know, basically, as I said before, you can make this a little bit eye-popping just to show the reviewer that uh, you're taking this seriously and just to make it stand out from other plans. Okay, so the first part, as we said, is the executive summary. So as we said, you should write this last because this basically it encompasses all nine components of the business plan. It's very important, as I said, because a lot of times the review of the plan will only look at this. They don't have the patience to read all 20 pages. They want to see all nine components all encompassed in one executive summary. So that's going to be your goal, is to basically be able to sell your business with this one, in this one powerful summary describing all aspects of the business. So moving along, the executive summary should touch on most of the areas of the business plan as you know, more important to describe all nine, including a description of the product and service, exactly what are you selling, the market analysis, how you plan on, on getting it out to the market, who your target market is, basically all areas of marketing, the whole marketing plan, should be, it should be simple and concise, how you plan on getting the product out and how you plan on reaching your customers, uh, who your management team and operations are, who's going to be running the business, both on the management side and personnel, who your employees are going to be, the projected sales. You know, again, you're going to have to do the financials first to be able to answer this question, but basically just give a number here of your startup costs and two-year monthly projections. And then if there's a gap between what your startup costs are and what the money you have, you should put in your funding request how much money you're looking for and what the money will be used for. So again, this is just 
this is very important that you outline very simply and concisely all six areas, or all, all nine areas of what we're looking for in one simple page or a few paragraphs. This is your executive summary. Okay, and the second part is we're going to actually start describing exactly your business. So basically, you're gonna, this is really what your business concept is. So you're going to have to cover in the business description four different components. First of all, you're going to have to describe the product and service, exactly what are you selling, who's buying the product, how are you going to make it, how are you going to distribute it, where will you be located, where is, where is, 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 what, where is uh, the location and the space of the business, the legal structure and other legal status. Again, this shows the review of the plan that uh, you're actually, it's not just a theoretical idea, but you're actually moving forward and that the business is actually, uh, whatever you decide it's going to be, either a self-proprietorship or an LLC or a corporation. Um, either you already have filed for the business or you're in the process of filing. So if you have a legal structure, you should basically detail and document what kind of structure you are. If you have a EIN number, if you have a tax ID number. And also very important is you make a milestone chart, which basically, you know, basically is, you know, invest, it's very nice to be able to tell someone that this is what you plan on doing, but a milestone chart basically gives you dates and times when you plan on actually achieving all the measurable activities that you plan on doing for the business. So a milestone chart will not just tell you basically straight out, I'm planning on, on, on hiring, let's see if person needs to hire a business manager. So instead of just saying, I plan on hiring a business manager, the milestone chart will show visually that you plan on hiring on January 1st, and this is, and this is gonna be the salary, et cetera, et cetera. Basically giving a visual view of exactly when you plan on reaching all the milestones of the business. Okay, so we're gonna go through each of the four different things, as I said, just with a little more detail. As we said, the business description, the product or service. So the first thing you're gonna have to do is list all the products and the services that you're offering. Basically, tell them what you're selling. The second part will be describe what they do and how they work. Describe the actual business, how the business is gonna run. And then you're gonna have to highlight the key features, what's, what's the benefit of this business, what's so special about this business, why people are gonna buy from you. Again, avoid any, you know, you know, some people tend, you know, they want to show that they're really intelligent and they basically use very expressive language. If a reviewer can't understand what your business concept is and what you're selling, it's not going to do you any good. So it's much better to be able to very succ simply and succinctly say exactly what your business is and the highlights of the business and what, uh, and what you're selling. Um, so we're just going to give a basic example of what we just said before. Again, this, uh, talk about your product or service. So let's, we're going to pretend here that this person has a seafood company. He wants to open up a seafood business. So here you're going to describe your product, basically say what the product and service is. So the name of the business is Finest Kind. Finest Kind provides premium quality seafood to both wholesale and retail customers. Again, this is just so we're giving, obviously if the business could be more complex, there'll be more information. But I'm just trying to show you the basic idea of, again, simply and succinctly just describing what the business is. And uh, so that, that's what your product and service is, and what's your, describe the business. Your goal is to provide the freshest seafood at competitive prices to customers within 25 miles of any town. That's the business that you're gonna provide within a 25 mile radius, you're gonna provide deliveries, however you're planning on doing it, provide all over. Now what's the, the actual benefits of the business? Well, how is this, how is, why is this business unique? We make promised deliveries on time and at the agreed upon price. So very simply and succinctly, you describe what the product is, how, you're gonna, how the business is run, and the quality of, of your business. So that's what we're looking for in describing the product and service. Now, but you're going to have to obviously, you know, looking at the next page, you're going to have to describe in a little more detail of why exactly people are going to want to buy from you. Why is, why is this different than other seafood places? And why are people, what makes your product unique? So why is there demand? Now, why, why are people going to want to buy from you? So here's where you'll detail, you'll give an example, you'll, you'll say finest kind is, is the only business within 10 miles 
the, ne- the nearest seafood place is 10 miles away. So we have the customers who just come around, you know, get, come out of their house, walk down the block, and be able to buy seafood. And what need does it fill a problem does it solve? It solves that a person doesn't have to get into a car and drive, you know, miles away to be able to, to buy something. He has a local store that will be able to meet all his needs. Again, a basic example of just what the product is, how the business is run, and how are you going to solve and when the problem is it solves the uniqueness of the business is that it's, it's local, easy for you to actually to come and get without a problem. So we just had a question is, how are you going to know demand if it hasn't sold yet? So again, you know, that's basically the point as you know, a business plan, as we've mentioned before, a business plan is usually written before the business is operational. So the best you can do really is, as they say, it's, it's projections. So again, obviously, it's going to have to be realistic projections. You're going to have to do the right research to show that this is something that actual, you know, by doing that, that research around showing that there's going to be a demand for the product, you basically have to convince your, the reviewer that there is a demand. And, and you're right, uh, a person, uh, you know, a reviewer may ask, you know, why is there a demand? There's 20 seafood places out there. Why is someone going to come to you? Your job is going to be to convince the, 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 the reviewer that there is a demand for your particular product. Again, showing backup documentation and proof that you see that customers, you'll have to do some sort of an analysis showing that customers will buy from you based on the demographics, the target market, and people that actually want your particular product. Okay, um, moving along. The next part of the business description is a legal structure. Now, as I said before, so this part really we're going to be discussed more in detail. You know, in a later class, we'll talk about, uh, you know, there are many different types of, when a person is forming a business, there are many different types of legal structures that a person can choose. Um, there's a sole proprietorship, a partnership, LLCs, different types of corporation. Each of them have their own pros and cons. Um, so as I said before, it's important that you should uh, detail and plan exactly what type of business you will be, uh, but the actual discussion and pros and cons of what type of business you should form, that's going to be discussed in, in one of the later classes. But you definitely should document here exactly what the legal structure of the business is. As I said before, milestones are very important. So as, as we read here, the milestones set the plan in practical and concrete terms. In other words, you're not just saying that you're going to do something, but you're actually showing in a visual presentation that you're actually going to actually do measurable activities to reach your goal and implement the business ideas. Um, they include real budgets, debt, which means how much it's going to cost you each component of the business that you need to, to get it working on, how much it's going to cost you, uh, the deadline, when, you know, what, when will that be completed? Who's going to be responsible for, for, implementa- for, for implementing the actual uh, plan? And measurable activities, which is uh, activities that you need to take in order to reach the goal. Uh, here's where a flow chart could be very helpful. You know, let's say the, the goal, you know, one of your goals in the business is, as I said, to hire uh, a manager. So you can make a little bit of a flow chart saying that showing January 1st, you're going to put out advertisements in the paper, and uh, February 1st, you're going to schedule interviews, and by March 1st, you'll have a business manager. So then that, that makes it more of, instead of a theoretical concept, it shows that you're actually working towards implementing the actual concept, and the actual uh, business idea makes it seem more realistic, and will make uh, someone who's reviewing the plan see that this is more of a well-thought-out plan as opposed to just an idea in your head. Okay, so the next page is just basically describing, again, the milestone should have a name, a start and end date, the person, the department will be responsible, and what everything is going to cost you. And looking at uh, you know, the, the milestone chart, basically, you know, if, if, you, if you can see it on, on your screen, you know, we'll just take, let's say, the first one. Again, this is just a visual aid for the reviewer, makes the business seem much, you know, much more realistic. Let's say the goal is to develop a business plan and marketing plan. So you see here that the start date is on June 1st. He hopes to have 
uh, resolution on February 1st. It's going to cost him $10,000. This is the manager responsible. These are the department. This is the manager responsible, the department that's responsible. So basically everything is laid out, exactly all you need to do to, to start the business is laid out and exactly you have a start and end date, a budget, and who's going to be in charge. Uh, this will also help you a lot towards your goal in figuring out your financials because if you lay out everything like this, you can see basically, you know, if you, uh, as you see laid out in the milestone chart, everything you need to do to start the business, I think it came out with a total of $32,000 and change. To, uh, th so uh, basically we're showing clearly exactly, so this will help you towards you know, figuring out your financials, uh, that you'll be, be able to figure out uh, simply exactly what your startup cost will be and how much money you need to be able to move forward in the business. Uh, something, this next part is not really so important, but this is, uh, you know, again, if you want to make it even more visual, uh, this is basically a graph that dis displays the milestones. It gives the readers a little bit of a, of a better idea. You know, basically lays out, that, you know, again, looking at the same thing, developing the business and marketing plan. Here it shows June 1st. He hopes to finish by February. Again, really the same idea, but just, but just showing you know, the reviewer that you actually have a concrete plan of, and, and clear dates of when everything is going to be implemented. Okay, so that's the first two parts of the actual, again, you know, as I said before, I'm available. If you have any questions about on, on any of the writing of, of, or formatting of the plan, I'm available either. You can call me, you could email me, we can set up an appointment. Um, again, not just in the sections that I'm talking about, even you know, the marketing and the financials I won't be talking about. I'm available still to help you format and do it correctly. Any questions you can have, you can call me and email me at any time, uh, and we can discuss. Okay, so sections three uh, through six is the marketing section, which uh, basically is developing a marketing plan. As I said, this is going to be uh, talked about more in detail uh, next Monday. Uh, but again, just to translate, just so you should basically just have a quick translation of what the terms mean. Uh, we're going to want you to determine a target market, which means doing research to show that people actually want your product. Um, an industry analysis showing that this is an a industry that's in an upward swing, that uh, you know, it's not a dying business. A competitive analysis, which means you're going to have to actually find competitors, who your competitors are, and you're going to have to actually do a, an analysis of why your product or service is more unique than your competitors. You know, again, it'll describe better price, better service. Again, this will be discussed uh, fully in the marketing class. And the last part is a marketing strategy. You're going to have to basically explain how you can actually reach the customers, you know, advertisements, other ways. Again, this is going to be uh, discussed fully in the marketing class. Okay, um, the next section is the operations, which is the actual running of, the, of your business, the, the company's actual needs. So again, this covers really three main components. Uh, the first component is actually how are you going to make the product and service? How are you going to basically, uh, first of all, is there a demand for the product? How are you going to actually develop it, produce it, manufacture it, distribute it, figure out pricing, billing? Anything that involves the actual running the actual business is going to have to be described in the operations. That's the first part. Uh, the second part is you're going to have to describe the actual location and space of the business. And uh, the, let me just hold on a second. Let me just get a clear view. And the third. Yeah, and the third step would be the actual, I'm sorry about that, is the actual uh, who's going to actually run the business, both in terms of the management and on the operation side. Who's going to be on your management team? Um, who's going to be uh, your personnel that's running the, actually the, the, ma the management team and the employees would need to be listed. So just you know, moving forward again, just in terms of the actual operating, as we said, you know, depending on the type of service uh, business industry you're in, you know, these are just some of the things, this is just a graph that will help you look at the, some of the things that you're going to be looking at in terms of, the, of what you need to be able to figure out what uh, the operations of the business is. You know, if you're a retail store, it's important for you to know location, the layout of the store, who your suppliers are, the sales terms, 
billing, pricing. Again, all this stuff is something that a reviewer is going to ask you. And if this is a real viable and business and something that uh, you can actually, a uh, real business concept, the reviewer is going to expect you to know the answers to all these questions. So again, if you're a service provider, there are other types of operations you need, who do you use the personnel, location, space, billing, manufacturing has its own set of requirements. So again, in the t so the first section of the operations part of the business plan is you're going to have to describe how all information involving the actual running of the company, you're going to have to describe in detail in terms of operating the business. The next part is uh, location. Now, again, what are your location needs? As we said before, depending on the type of business you're in, if this might be a type of business that, you know, if it, let's say it's a business that requires foot traffic, you might need to be located in a desirable area. So it's important for you to say that you're either looking for a space like that or that you're actually ha have a space, you know, that would meet the needs of your business. Now, what kind of building do you need? You know, sometimes it's the type of business that you don't need a large space. That, you know, you know, if it's not, not a retail store, it's something that's just a, a type of service business, it's possible you just have a small back office somewhere and run the business like that. So again, you should basically detail exactly what type of space you need. Why is this a desirable area or desirable building? As I said before, depending on the type of business industry you're in, you want to describe you know, clearly and concisely what type of, uh, you know, again, if it's a type of business that requires foot traffic, you're in a popular area, you need a large space, you need a small space, basically describing your location needs. And the last part would be, how do you plan to keep an eye on demographic shifts in your area? This is also very important. You know, you might have a specific target market. Let's say your target uh, market is, is from Jews. So the reviewer might ask you, what happens if in a year or two from now, you know, the people, you know, people are going to move out to another area. Does that mean your business is finished, that you can't move your business forward? So it's important that you should have some sort of backup plan that you can tell the reviewer that, that you have plans in case something uh, changes in your demographics to be able to, uh, to clearly describe what you're going to do moving forward to be able to meet the needs of your business even if the demographics change. So again, very important part is that even if you have a location, You'll be, uh, be able to have to answer the reviewer's question of what happens if the demographics change and now there's less people in, in this area, how are you going to service them? You need to be able to have an answer to that question. Again, uh, more in terms of, again, space. Uh, as we said before, depending on the type of industry you are, you know, sometimes you'll need a little more. If you're a restaurant or other type of retail store, you might need, a, like I said, a space, you know, a big space and in a popular area. Describe the neighborhood, desired location and its importance. Again, you wanna, the your point is to convince the reviewer of the plan that this is going to be a profitable business. So if your business is, requires foot traffic, so detail exactly where you are. I'm in a popular area and you know, where th thousands of people walk every day and I feel that the business will be successful because of that. Um, and the next three, you know, three details here, it just shows the reviewer that you actually did your research and you know your business. Describe the space if you need to remodel, if you rent or buy, the costs. You should know the cost of remodeling, know the prevailing rates. You know, again, uh, the answer I don't know for a reviewer's question uh, does not sound good at all. Any question that a reviewer will ask you about the operations of your business, you should be able to know fully. Again, especially expecting him to fund you in terms of investing or, or a business loan, any needs of the business, what everything is going to cost you, should be outlined clearly, and you should know, uh, know the information backwards and forwards to be able to answer any question that a reviewer may have in the space of, in, in, in terms of, of really any, any terms of any operating uh, requirements for the business. And the last part, of describing the operation of the business is describing who your management team is. You know, every, every business needs a strong, you know, again, one person can't do it all, you need a strong management team. So you should describe the duties, roles of each member, what are their qualifications and relevant background experience. Again, uh, don't just say the name of the actual, you know, person, if you have a higher business manager, say his name, say his qualifications. If possible, include a resume 
just again to show the person reviewing your plan that your business is in good hands with this individual running your business. And as I just pointed out, identify your weaknesses in management. Um, sometimes, you know, not, we don't expect you to be Superman and really do everything on your own. You know, if you feel you have a weakness in a certain area, in terms of management, accounting, you know, there's nothing wrong in detailing in the plan that uh, this is your weakness, and because of that weakness, you're hiring this individual whose strength is in that area. Again, then, uh, you know, uh, the, it has the opposite effect. It shows that you're not being unrealistic, and you realize that you can't do everything. So it's, it's okay to identify a weakness and how you're going to make that weakness into a strength. And the last part, as we said, you know, some, you know, there are certain types of uh, business structures that require that you have board members. So if you are that type of corporation, you know, you should list over here the board members and, and, and their resumes and show their qualifications, you know, and show what their experiences are. Again, this shows that this is a real business concept and this is not just a theoretical business idea, but you're actually moving forward with the implementation of the business. Okay, so that's your management team. And now you want, now you have to see, you know, what are you, as we said before, describing the operations of the business. We also need you to, you know, to see who your employers are, who your, who your employees are. So, again, showing that you have a handle of what you need, what are your current personnel needs, who do you need to hire to fulfill all your operating needs. What skill sets do your employees need? How much are you going to pay them? Are you going to pay them overtime? Benefits, taxes? Are you going to have training? Again, uh, describe in detail. This is all part of the operations of your business. Again, who you, what you need to be able to run your business effectively, who you need to hire, how you plan on training them. So again, management personnel is very important. As I said before, we don't expect you to do everything on your own. You need a strong team to be able to run your business effectively. So here's this part of the business plan is the time where you're going, where you're going to document that. Okay, so we got through the eight components. The last section is the financials. Um, as we said before, uh, this is going to be discussed really uh, more fully in the financials class. That's going to be on Wednesday, I think we said, is the next class. So again, basically, it's going to be, you're going to have to figure out your startup costs for the business, um, your sales projections. We're going to want to see an Excel worksheet, first year monthly projections, uh, second year quarterly projections, notes and assumptions, which are basically backing up how you came up with the numbers. Again, how are you going to figure out the exact numbers? You know, that's going to be discussed fully in the financials class. Okay, so this really should cover the actual business plan. The next section is uh, the appendix, which is the supporting documents. As I said before, this is not included. Okay, all right, so before we, you know, move forward, you know, anybody can email questions. I'll be ha more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. So, should we take a break here? Should we, uh, or should we? No, no, we'll move, we'll move, yeah. Hopefully questions will come Right, okay. Um, all right, so moving on to the supporting documents that, that you'll need. Again, this is again not part of the 20 page limit. It's just uh, basically you're showing the reviewer that this is again not just a theoretical idea, but you actually have a real business that's, that's starting a real company. So have your resume in there, the resumes of all your, your whole team, your management team, your employees, the photos of your product or the location. If you have marketing materials, add them here. If you have contracts from prospective customers, it should be included here. Invoices, estimates, the startup costs. If you have a copy of the lease, floor plans, renovations, any type of documents that show that you're actually moving forward in the implementation of the company, that all should be included in the supporting documentation. You could also include in the supporting documentation, you know, as you do, you know, a lot of these things in terms of marketing and financials, you're going to have to show and uh, research that shows that this is the right demographic to run this business or company. So if you have supporting documentation in terms of articles, you can include them also here in the supporting documents. And they don't need to be, you know, you don't have to worry about this being included in your 20-page limit. Okay, so that covers uh, 
that, uh, that covers the actual business plan. Um, the last part we're going to discuss is just, we'll just take uh, one question here quickly. Let me look at the question. So the question is, if the plan is for the business to develop over more than two years, do we include all plans until the business reaches full maturity, or only for the upcoming two years? No, so basically, you know, it could be really never ending, but uh, again, we want to make this as simple as possible. So really, basically, we just want to see two-year projections, because uh, that's what you can get a good, clear view of what the business is, you know, through two, two years. Basically, a lot of times, you know, the first year business breaks even, but by the second year, we expect to see already, you know, some movement in the profitability of, of, of the business. So basically, all we're looking for really is two years projections. This uh, what the the actual class or the, the or the actual writing of the plan. Um, so the question is how how much time should it take to actually write the plan? Uh, the, you know, again, the, the it's more the, the doing the research is something that really that should take the most time. Again, if you have a clear business plan template that that outlines the nine sections and exactly what we're looking for. It makes the process a lot easier. Um, you know, if you give it really your full attention and working on it basically as much as you can, it should take you about two weeks, you know, to get all the necessary information done to be able to, to write the plan. I think two weeks' time should be uh, more than enough. Okay, uh, moving to the last section, which is just, you know, tips to make, as we said, to make your your business plan stand out. You know, just, uh, you know, again, basically you want to make a good impression on the review of the plan. So the first thing is to avoid common mistakes, you know, missing contact info. You know, an example would be listing uh, you know, one person on your management team, but you don't say who he is, what his qualifications are. You just write, you know, Joe Smith is the manager. Who is he? Why does he, is he qualified? You know, again, that just shows, you know, that's, unprofessionalism. An incomplete table of contents or cover sheet. You know, again, as we said before, you know, some, some reviewers, you know, a lender, a bank, or an investor doesn't want to go through the entire business plan. He wants to just look at one section. He should be able to look at the table of contents and, and, and find a section. If he's fumbling around uh, to find the section, you know, you're off to a bad start. Um, insufficient research. In other words, you're not convincing that this is a product that people want. You know, so, you know, basically, as I said, the reviewer of the plan needs to be convinced that this is a business that's going to be profitable. You know, if you, you don't do it, if, if basically he's not convinced that this is something that people need, he's not going to invest or not going to lend. So make sure you do enough research. Poorly defined target market. You know, you say your, your target market is, is seniors, but you don't, uh, th you know, it's not convincing that uh, seniors will benefit from, the, you know, from the actual product or service. Again, make sure that the target market, that you actually define clearly who, who needs your product. Incomplete competitive analysis, which means, again, there might be 20 companies or businesses that do the same thing that you do. You have to show that you're unique and that, you're not, that they can't get the same product from the other company. Make sure that you're very, very convincing that they, they should buy from you because you are more unique than your competitors. You know, irrelevant or illogical numbers. Basically, you overestimate what your profitability is. You know, you just throw out numbers. You're going to make, you know, X amount of money, but the numbers don't really, you know, document the, you know, inconsistent that, that, that goes into the next one. There are inconsistencies all across the plan. You know, you're not con basically the numbers don't add up, and we don't see that you can actually uh, reach those numbers. Um, over-reliance on business plan writing software. You know, the, you know, the same way uh, a teacher can tell if you uh, Wikipedia the, the book report, you know, so a reviewer can tell if you copy and pasted uh, your business plan from, you know, from other business plan templates. So again, we want to see that you did your research, you put in your time, and that you actually put effort in in writing the plan. 
And obviously, the last thing is spelling and grammar. You want to, again, just to show professionalism, make sure that you look over your plan, make sure that everything is correct in that area. Uh. Okay. Okay. Um, so, basically we're almost done. We're just going to now describe, you know, the keys to a good plan, basically taking all those, you know, avoid the common mistakes and basically clearly describe your product and service, you know, clearly say exactly, it should be easily understood why your product is, why your service is, define the target market, you know, be clear of exactly who needs your product, make sure you research your industry well, Show that this is an industry in an upward swing, that people are going to action, that this is a thriving business industry. Identify your competitive advantage. Show clearly that people are going to buy from you and not your competitors. Develop a strong marketing plan. Be clear. Do a lot of research showing you know, who your market is. Set clear milestones of when you plan on implementing each of, each of the different components of your business. And realistic financial projections. Again, not overly optimistic, don't underestimate, don't overestimate, basically go by the research that you've done. You know, if, you're, if, you, if your plan shows you're going to make X amount of money, uh, that should be supported, you know, realistic financial projections. Again, if you could, the projections don't add up and then you might have to reevaluate the entire business. But, uh, you know, don't overestimate, don't underestimate. The numbers should back up the information that you're looking for. Okay, so we have a question here. When does the timeline of the plan starts. Okay, so this is, you know, really, you know, th th there's no set real answer to that. Um, if this is really a new business concept. And, uh, you know, again, if you're writing the business plan now and you're planning on moving your business forward now, you really could start the two years from now. You know, if you have a, some, a business that's running for five years but you haven't moved forward with it and uh, nothing really developed, you know, you don't have to count that towards your, you know, your, your two-year projections. If this is something that you're, again, you're starting fresh and you want to start, and, and now you're actually putting your heart and soul and you're going to start the business uh, fresh now, so, you know, you can actually start your two-year projections from now, from the actual implementation of the business plan. Again, just uh, again, again, these are just basic, easy tips. We, we want to see 20 pages maximum. Again, just to make it, you don't want to go not too long of a drush. It's simple, 20 pages, clearly pointing out each component of the plan. You know, research all the areas, back up your statements. Again, you're going to come up with numbers. You're going to say who your de demographics are. You're going to say who your target market is. Don't do, we can't just take your word for it. You're going to have to show, you know, back up documentation showing that this demographic is going to buy your product. This person does need your product or service. You're going to have to explain quite clearly. Again, convince your reader, answer the questions that you would ask. You know, pretend that you're the review of the plan and you're being asked to invest money in the company. You know, so any questions that you feel they may ask you, uh, any, any questions that you feel you may ask them, uh, you should be able to answer you yourself. You know, think of what they would ask you and answer their questions in terms of the operation of the business, and why you think the business is going to be profitable and successful. Write clearly, you know, don't, uh, again, as I said before, simple English. The reviewer should have a clear understanding of what your business concept is and why it's a good business idea. If he, doesn't, if he has to think about what exactly, you know, he doesn't fully understand the business concept, then, you know, that's not a good sign. And again, have someone look over your plan for errors, make sure that that person understands it. Again, all this should show that You've done your research, and you can answer all questions effectively of the operations of the business. Uh, we're looking for a well-researched and a well-written plan. A thorough plan addresses all sections of all nine components of the outline should be, uh, should be addressed. A convincing plan shows that a success, how it describes a business that will succeed. A business that's realistic. A business with a clear need for the $7,500 award. Again, describe how you're going to use that award and a business that will have a positive impact in the community wish to plan outlines. Again, we're looking, just, we're looking for a clear, concise, 
answering all nine components of the plan and how you plan on implementing a successful and profitable business. Okay, so uh, that concludes uh, the first part. And as I said before, you know, I'm available. You can email. I know a lot of you have already gotten in touch with me, but you definitely can email me or call me. We can set up an appointment to talk. Again, not, you know, you know, there are some areas that I said are going to be de detailed in further classes in terms of marketing and financials, but I really you know, can talk about all sections of the plan. So if you feel you still need help after you, know, after you listen to all the classes and you feel that you still need help, you definitely can instead of an appointment with me and we'll discuss uh, further and I'll definitely help you in the writing and the formatting of the plan in any way that I can. Thank you very much. Yes, the next class will be Amir Tashem Wednesday, 8 p.m. We're looking forward to seeing you there. Same place, same time. Have a good evening.